I'll probably leave questions uh, to the end if we can, just so we can uh, try and flow through it. Right, so the first one, as a warm up, uh, we're going shoulders to the uh, baseline, low ball toss, and we're going to square up. I want you to try and catch it at foul line extent. Then, square up, rip for going baseline, one dribble. On the record, you'll be doing the same thing with the other one on the other side of the floor. Go. One ball toss, square up, dribble, one dribble, on the record. Okay, so let's keep going with that. Right, make sure we show the screen. We're up to catch, big first step, oh, no. like a jump. Work now. Come on. Next one. Now the best one can go in. Like a walk to the line. You square up. Short jab. Long stride. You're on the red. Again, one dribble. Right, let's go. Let's see it. Square up. Short jab. Long stride. On the red. Right, get that little jab step in. Good. Okay, so use this as part of your warm up. Now, what you can do from here, you're going to go, right, so you're going to get into your uh, short jab, right, long stride, right, at the end of your dribble, right, so I want you to stride out here, right, so it's going to be short jab, long stride, shot fake, step through. Okay, let's see how we go with that. Right, square up, short jab, long stride. Stop making step through. Right? Yeah, want to be trying to get on the rim for a layup out of that. So what we're trying to teach here, which I think Jerry will get onto later, is trying to utilize your first step. Alright, so it's really important that we go somewhere on that first dribble. Right? The big first step. So trying to break your play down. Right, so it's here. Shot fake. Step through and layup. Out of right, so let's give that a go. So here we go. Square up, short jab, long stride, soft face. Right, down the footwork. Right, let's go. Soft face, step through. Okay, right, so that'll do it. I know uh, Jerry will talk more about that and he's, uh, he's half out. We'll now go into what we call tight shooting drills. So I've got three lines across the foul line. One to the elbow, one to the foul line. Another one to the elbow right here. What we normally do with our senior women's team here, Three basketball zone, the guys on the puddle, all each just going to rest down on the sideline. Four minutes on the clock, and our target is 90 makes, 90 plus in the four minutes. So, out of this, in different places you can run it, what I'm going to ask you to do, shoot the ball, sprint, run down your rebound, and it's all about your passing skill as well, alright? I, I don't want to have a loose pass, so catch, pivot, right, execute your pass. Shoot as you need to be in the stance, right, ready to receive it, ready to shoot the ball. Now, once you've passed it, you can jump the blue line and just work your line, okay? Right, ready to go, shoot it, run it down, out, run the blue. Get the stance, ready to shoot it. Good. Okay, so you've run that for four minutes, okay, and set yourself a, a realistic target. What we can do out of this is now we'll extend and get you out on the three point line again on the long line. You guys are solid through. We're now going to go one dribble pull up jump shots. First team to seven. So you're a team, you'll work inside the floor the same. Again, I want you operating out of the stance, big and quick first step. Right, mix it up and go right and left. Right, let's go. Run it down. Right, so we go quick games, first and seven here. Right, so we've got seven, then we'll rotate our game in front of us. Right, so I'll tell you what we've got seven.
three bowls, all right? So, say, uh, get three of you right here. All right, short range, baseline jump shot it's gonna be. Uh, three of you on the side of the ball, two bars of bowls. All right, you guys on Okay, so we're gonna go uh, three bars of balls right here. Now, there's five spots on the floor you're gonna look to cover, all right? So we're gonna go uh, 20, yeah, 20 mates from the baseline. 20 mates from the elbow, 20 mates from the foul line extended, and then we go into pull up jump shots, all right, 20 mates, and then it's 10 threes that you need to nail. So 90 mates all up. Once you've made your 90, you can sprint the other end of the floor, and you go back to the start, the short range start, all right? So we're trying to get 130 plus the senior players in the seven minutes. So what we'll do is we'll get into it now, all right? I'll Maybe 20, then you'll go to the next spot. Alright? Alright, ready? Alright, let's go. Hold that guys down. Alright, change lights. Get to that one. Alright, so that's 20 right now. The other one, let's go. Go. 
strength run, you've got to stand on the floor and you'll continue to do that. So you're going to run the same way. Alright? You can start on that way. No, no, same shoot as it. Same shoot as it for two minutes. Okay? So we'll demo how this goes. So go! Here we go. Catch the rhythm. Shoot it. Turn around and sprint on the floor. Go.
Okay, so you continue that for a minute. Now, and that's pretty taxing drill too. Like once you start missing a few shots, you're looking to put it back in, you really feel it uh, lacking as it comes through your legs. But good job. Again, eight plus in a minute on that uh, one minute drill. Okay. We got through it. <laughs> All right. Um, feel free to ask any, any questions. Great job there, boys. Too. Good work. Any questions? It's too late. I must admit, when I read Alex's plan, I was like, man, how is he going to get through all of this? <laughs> you have one minute for something. Like that. You've done a great job. Uh, any questions for Alex? What about observations? Some things that I noticed definitely was there was a level of every drill that he does. You know, and once you get to a senior level, it's a bit of an expectation that if players are actually want to get more than more, they've got to perform. <coughs> the the game. A little bit different to the juniors, particularly how they know the team is, but if they're not being competitive in everything they do, they're not just going to succeed. So that's what I noticed. And I also noticed that there's measurable targets. Like everything is said, this is the target, this is the time, we've got to do it, otherwise we don't achieve our goal. I think that's a good thing to have, or get you to set points, but I think that's a good thing to have in any competitive shooting group. What's our target? You know, we're starting to build towards some of that with juniors, you know, like we've got targets with that conditioning, we do competitiveness with our shooting. But for these guys, this is the expectation that's going to want to take at a competitive level. What? Just on that, Alex, with the, with the targets that you have, do you implement a penalty if they don't meet those targets? Yeah, you can do. We, we often do. Um, Sometimes we don't, but the majority of times we do. We want to, uh, I guess, challenge our players. So I think it's really important you keep a realistic target to your relevant groups. Um, so it could be a bit of trial and error to start off with and get a get a feel of how many shots they're getting up uh, in, in a certain time frame and the way they're setting things up from there. It's my experience with senior players that are going back to that level of competitiveness. Quite often, if they haven't completed it, they'll be asking the coach. We want to do it again because they, they want to achieve, they want to feel a sense of accomplishment. Um, and the other thing that I take out of it is there's an expected level of fitness or conditioning that's required to play at a senior level. You know, we talk about our three minute run stuff, senior basketball obviously moves a little bit quicker, physicality, all those types of things. You've got to be able to have multiple efforts before you shoot. So that, that's my take on that. Any other questions for Alex? Right. Right, up next we have uh, Mitch, who it also happens to be his birthday, so everybody uh, say happy birthday to Mitch. Right, oh, Mitch, I've come. <laughs> so, most of you know Mitch, Mitch has uh, just recently been hired as our development officer. He's doing a great job. Um, uh, with all the dudes, with the school staff, the development coach now. 16, he's doing some stuff at the academy, and youth league, does a lot of stuff. First time presenting in a clinic for a last year official capacity. So, yeah, I'm I'm uh, the utmost conference in New Year's is being given a topic of defense, so we're kind of alternating a little bit here. So, Mitch is going to have half an hour here. So, if we could all please uh, welcome in. Uh, first off, excuse me, Paul. Oh, what's going on out here? Um, yeah, after the defense, I know this stuff's going to be new, like some of the stuff that's all Alex. Um, it's all stuff I've seen on a Sunday that I've done before. Um, but most of that, we just want to talk a few things and give you a few ideas. Um, you might not have thought of when you first saw the drill, which we've done it for a couple of years now, and just to get it out of the topics or ideas. Um, I'll just emphasize a few things. Yeah, we actually do struggle with that side of the content, that side of things. Um, there's a big area, some of the stuff here, like push points. Much to their boys and Terry at closing out the um, And really, I've kind of, I actually forgot about it a fair bit until Darren was there uh, chatting with her, chatting with Dr. Monday and trying to push points with her. And why is that not We don't do that. Um, so hopefully, this will kind of jog uh, a few little things for you guys. Um, we'll get something out of it. First of all, we'll set our hands. So we've got it here just to mention on a piece of paper. We've got our so for some of you guys who might not have heard that terminology before, um, that says there, a long close out your final, you stand in the out of the you throw a second shooter, you carry your hand, but it's not step-cuts, it's a corner. Um, so it's 
So we're, we're expecting that they might play the guys, but they're also very capable of being a shot. The short close that just traditional kind of five man is still have to close out and carry hand just in case it does decide to pop the shot with his three and celebrate. But they're not really a scoring threat, they're more kind of a drive option. And then you run just step carry in the same way and let it go. And you're most likely going to get burnt off that and you want to look the ball uh, because they're obviously just in two or three in a row. Can't afford another three ball, so we're just chasing more from one completely um, and making a bit more for making a choice um, when they're trying to, trying to get to the prank there. So that's the kind of thing we've got to start using with that especially rather than just saying, oh yeah, we just got to chase it. It's really sprint at him, uh, run close out at number 30, we've got a short close out at number 15 because he hasn't been a shot on right. That kind of stuff has had us hopefully going to state programs or national programs or whatever as they progress. It's not new words then, they come up the stairs, the coach goes, alright, we're going to run on number 20. They go, alright, easy, I know what's going on. Um, so a few simple drills we can do to warm up if we're going to focus on closeouts. Uh, yeah, from this one. So I just need a line here at the block. Just going backwards, so facing the board line, maybe on the other side. This is a simple one, we do this and these leads on time to march and angle really, really wants to focus on defense. Okay. Really simple. Kind of old school, we're just going to do a bit of patter that we usually do this after we've done our kind of generic warm up. Pit of patter on the side, we have multiple assistant coaches on standing there. If you have an assistant coach, you can get them for all here um, and yourself. If you don't, you get them to close it out to the three point line. When you say go, they'll start pit of pattering on the spot, and then you'll say they'll get them to close out to the three point line, and then they'll have two slides depending on where you want your push points to go. Okay, so you might say, so we're emphasizing the base on the side on here. So on that close out, I'll do the close out, and then we're emphasizing two slides, we're pushing a baseline. If we're going talking about the other wheel, we're going through the elbow, okay? So we're trying to push the elbow, the elbow, the elbow, that way. Depending on what you want to work on. Okay, for juniors, that's a lot of time, okay, we're just going to force the left, because most people can't do it with their left hand. Um, some people obviously sideline basing on top of it. That's going to be one of the two. Okay, on that go, it's up to the pattern. On the second go, we're going to close out. I want one line here, one side here. We're going to chop out the three. We're going to chop out three like the last bit. You're going to close it up, so we're going to have a long close out here. Okay, close it up, we touch the ball, and then we're going to pop back. Okay, so we're going to be uh, ready to play defense. Okay, so we're going to close out, high hand, chop out the feet, the ball, and then we're going to pop back to the arms of the We're going to have two slides to our outside. Okay, so we're going to go to the sideline. Ready? Go! Go! Oh. 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 Two slides. Good. Yes, we're closing out, pop back, and then two slides across straight away, so as if you're driving to the side. Okay? Go! Go! Them. So if we're closing out here, 
We've got, as we close out, now if you really want to be sideline, baseline dominant, we want to angle, we don't also want to open up. Too many kids close out, they think they're setting a baseline, and we go to a straight line to the basket. Yeah. So we're closing out our butts to the basket. We've got some major slide and angle foot, uh, footwork, but nothing too major. Okay, and our push points are going to be the corner of the backboard or over the elbow. Okay, so there's almost that feeling of home shape that we don't want them getting to a little small, which on Friday night is obviously a little ideal. But I think at this stage, especially on a 16, 18, we were too much to look at the traction goal or too many flow lines. Okay. So we're really going to focus on the flow lines, or the over, or the other on the backboard. So we'll just play one on one on the next time. I'll show you the two guys here. And then we'll play back to the full ball. I am. Sorry. 
back, especially as you go up higher. Not so much with the 12s, especially like the 4s and 5s. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be too worried about both clothes out and long clothes out there. But uh, as soon as you get really 14, 2, 14, 3, 3, 3 and above, you've got way too many shoes, especially these days. It's all five positions. Everyone can shoot the three ball. We've got to be able to close it out and contain. We've got to be able to communicate after we've been burnt as well. Okay, I've seen these shooters. People are going to be running off the wire. The ball's going to be put on the floor. We're going to be able to communicate more than that. Uh, can I get you six? Jump back here. You four. Back seat, Tommy. Uh, we're going to do a free tag. Okay, so it's the diag <coughs> reversal. Diag. Two of you guys are. Two of you guys are. Yeah, yeah. One more. You got a joke? Yeah, one to D, two to offense. Okay, we're 
four for you. Now, first of all, I'm not depending on how bad my team has been. Um, I'm not always going to rotate the ball from Chris to all the other people who play. Now, I don't know where else to walk the line that way. Like, swing the ball around, swing the ball back. Okay, probably put my team start to beat them, but I'm not going to be. Here, yeah, I'll usually start the ball with Drift and Bob Tommy at the opposite diag. Okay, we'll start with placement here. All we're emphasizing here is on our closeouts. Just our push ones. Okay, so every time we close out, we're either going over the elbow. So we're going to force you over the elbow. Just 
new test blocks unless they get caught for fair. Yeah. It, 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 it is super frustrating. But for those who don't know, uh, say, so it's not more than a So as we're getting to kind of those push points, um, we're down in the stands and we do cut them off slightly with our test. Okay? Obviously, we're not reaching what I'm doing in, but just making that contact at contact and keeping that off that line. So, only about kids. We say you go to the other one, you play how to open up straight away, you don't want to get a foul. And making that contest, uh, making that contest while still being in a good defensive stance and meeting them with your chest while you're open. Obviously, without your hands being in there. Well, yeah, the press call is foul all the time, and it, it, it is frustrating. Um, but if you can stop them from getting where they want to go, we kind of challenge where we want to go. And we're in a good defensive stance. Hopefully the ref sees that and they don't blow the whistle. Um, I think it depends on the referee, the grade, the ref before and all that kind of stuff. Thankfully, like if you're in big champ or something like that, the ref should let it go. Um, some grades they won't. But yeah, if you force them to go to the let go, you can block off their line and meet them with your chest while in a good defensive stance. I, I agree, I think it's at least seeing the referees who have an idea. Um, a lot of that, and they're basically on the top of the boat. So it's a bit harder. I always tell the boys to start the test box, it's quite hard. Pick up that couple of fouls early, and these referees don't like that. That's a good example of all the defenses. So you can play the test box that's Yeah, that's often the other thing. They like to get a hand on it. Yeah, getting, getting their hand off is a big one. Um, and while I'd like to join here, hopefully for the kids can progress and kind of into a safe program and stuff, it doesn't get blown there. Um, and that's where they'll kind of excel and that's where the advantage comes in. But it's, yeah, it's a tedious one, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, anything else? Uh, a couple of things from my observations. Really important to declare the ball. Okay, so we don't have two people running out to it. And I know this is very basic stuff, but you see it at all levels. The pop back is actually what will set up your the work for the test one. Okay, so if you crowd your player, you see if they put the ball above their head, you can crawl in and try and jam them. They bring it down, you can go pop back. But if you drop step, then try and cut them off with a step like that, that's where the chest bump is wrong. Okay, and that's what I see So it's about beating them to the spot. And the COE did a bunch of uh, movement pattern studies with badminton players. Okay, and they found obviously the electric stuff moving and pushing off two feet is actually better than pushing off one foot. So when you pop back and actually jump across like that, you're more likely to take a chest bump. So from a reference perspective, every player has a cylinder that goes around them and all the way up to the clouds. And two cylinders arriving at the same time is play off. Okay, so quite often I see it too, and we'll say do you get a job, but we're late. We're late to it. Okay, so it's about popping back two cylinders right on the same time. It's something we have to continue to do, like I said, and Mitch said, once you go up the walls, that's just a play off. Okay, particularly driving on the baseline. One one thing that I did want to uh, touch on, which was in the three on three tag is the robot, that was the first thing guarding two, so they have to drop to the other so quite often they're the one that's gonna to have to go. Okay, so it's very hard to go from boy boy on that wing to close out on the ball, so the boy most often will be the one that goes. And the last thing we'll talk about before we get to Jerry is helping off the duck cut. Okay, we just go four out here. Obviously, it's a car with you, and uh, Ashton as well. So just jump under the bus, let's get dark four out. Yep. So let's say the challenge is on offense here. We're going to call this the dunk spot. So we've got our driver, drift, diag, drag. We haven't done a lot of work on this, but this is the big, so this is the dunker. It's quite often, so Matt is guarding this here. Marcus is going to say at home. Okay, let's say Logan is big. So coming forward here, yeah, we will help off the dunker, and this person is the one that will get open. Okay? Best strategy is to say attach to the dunker. Okay, and imagine that they're getting separate from the game of one on one. And we're still in our own game of four on four. Okay, so staying attached to the dunker stops those, dunk, those little dunk things. Okay, so best is to keep your close to the on the ride, inside arm bar, and it's up here, test on the shot, and then go straight into the block out. Okay, and then still treat like a four on four situation. You need to say that to the post player, 
Yeah, we've got some things to go later. Okay, thanks guys. So, thanks Mitch, well done, first one. Particularly in the right there. Um, I'll introduce Jared, our next coach. Really excited to have Jared. I'll put a phone call to Jared Martin to come and uh, do a clinic here on the zero step. So, Jared's been around for a long time. He was at DOC for 11 years, I think, in South Penn. Big country, high performance coach, coaching multiple nationals. He's now the Basel Victoria Hub coach for the KC and the Peninsula region. He's the national under 18 and 3 on 3 coach for. Yep, so the stuff that he's doing with footwork, his cutting edge, we've all heard about the zero step stuff. This is going to be probably a bit challenging for some of us, definitely the players, but it's something that we have to open our minds to because this is the way the game is going. So, plenty of notes on um, this, you can send it to So, really excited to have Jared here. Yep, you, what's going on? What's wrong? 
7 minutes. Alright, so we'll get you a couple more buttons. I'm going to get you a bad one So you guys are with drift diag for five minutes? Yep, okay. So our diag traditionally will be the nipple wall. Or thereabouts. So the same angle, but further back. Well, I like to use spin wall. Yeah, go, 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 go
how we wish it. One, two. 
dive running straight down and sort of roll it into him and everybody else in front of him. These players in the adventure outside the key, most definitely change. The importance of the touches from your post player, however, has not. Okay, the post has become a great place to initiate your offense from, a great place to pass from, and then obviously always still sort of small. Okay, so when we talk about penetration, everybody thinks we talk about dribble penetration. We actually have pass penetration, and we also have post penetration. Okay, so anytime we get any penetration, it's good to make it or we can exploit the mismatch for a one on one situation. So, I wanted to talk about ducking in first. Obviously, we at KC will teach our players running down the middle of the court, and as we're running down the middle of the court, every major line, so foul line, center line, foul line, they need to turn back with their chin on their inside shoulder to find the ball. Okay, so if, say, Cal had the ball there and we're attacking this way, and I'm looking at it, so guys, I would look to see does he need help? Do I need to come back and smash it for him? As the ball's coming down here, I'm running down the middle. Once I get to a major line, fight the ball. Do I need to once again release the pressure? And I'm going to go back to him. If not, once I get to this major line, find where the ball is, what side of the floor is it on, depending on what your rules are. Some teams have a strong side post, some teams have a weak side post. It's at that point we're starting to think, I need to try and take the rim. So there's a couple of different ways to duck in. I think the best way to teach it for the way that we play is to take advantage of the player that's standing sort of up the line, weak side of the E. And most times you see the ball is here. If Cal was the offensive player, Luke would be standing somewhere like this, playing defense, which is good post D. If he was flat, that would allow Cal to come and take the front of the rim and then we have a score. So the way we want to do it is we use the terminology to break their arms. It's normally one like this. So if Luke's got his pad up. It's nice and soft, but I'm going to too hard. When we step it through, we actually want to swing our arms and open up towards the wall. So as we're holding it here, swing through, break the arms. Turn, shove them back, and then we have our post play. So we talk about in the juniors bump down, and I say it a lot. It doesn't matter how tall you are, it's how wide you can be. We say elbows up and thumbs in. That way we have a strong presence. So when we're done in, we're smashing through those arms, elbows up, thumbs in, then we can play. So let's have a couple goes of that. Cal, just, just smash them. Good, good. All right, come back. So somebody has to be the aggressive guy, and we want it to be the offensive play. Okay, that one take the Smash through. Good, okay. So remember we said we want to break their arms, so we're going to slide up through their arms. Okay, so your right hand is going to take the first arm out. Good, and then you're going to shuffle back. Okay, and remember your nose can't go over your toes, but then you start falling. And if Luke pulls a chair on you, you don't want to fall back either. Okay, so when you kick, swing through and kick, shove it back. Okay, remember it's like sitting in a chair. Here we go. Yeah, pretty good. Let's go one more. Alright, now look, put the pad down. So thinking about where the ball is, thinking you can see where Cal is, how would you be standing effectively? Good, okay, so he's not going to hit you hard. You've got your hands here in the lane. So Cal, you're just going to walk through and smash through this arm. So you're going to lift it up. Good. It's out of the way. Now you have both arms up. You have a new target. Okay, now it's your job to bring your feet to the ball when the ball is in the air. So we say it a lot to our kids. When the ball is in the air, the feet are in the air. So let's say you've got this heel here. Good job. And let's say Callan leaves his feet on the ground. What are you going to do, Luke, as it's coming? Come around and tip it. Right? So we want to talk about position versus possession. Right? I don't mind if we give up a little bit of position as long as we keep the possession. So assuming Cal's done his work early, he's got a good seal under the rim. If Cal has to jump out here to make sure he's still got the ball, at least we still have it. Okay? So we've come through, 
squat through the smash. Big dog fight scene with the balls in the air. Our feet are in the air. We come to a big grab. Now, any questions on any of that before we move on? Right, good. Can you go pull the ball as well? Okay, so if we're playing your traditional sort of post up on the clock, okay, we talked about it being a good place to pass from. It's important to have angles with our feet in order to see the floor. Okay, so quite often we'll have a post here we talk about more and more above the block. What's important is when you look on your inside shoulder and you see the majority of the floor. Okay, so there's no point coming out to try and post like this. Okay, because you actually can't see what's going on behind you. It's important to have your feet angles. I'd like to talk about the timeout hash. Here, you have a feet facing that. When you've got your chin on your inside shoulder, you can see the rest of the floor. So both of you are going to start with the baseline and the seam join. We want you to spin the ball out for yourself. Okay, it's not a skin step, it's a right step. You're just going to go ahead and put your jumps off. You want to work on the seam there. You want to have the ball on your outside shoulder and your chin on your inside shoulder. Right, let's go. Make sure you can see across the floor, let's go. Pretty good. So the ball on your outside shoulder, we now want to talk about how we actually roll the ball. Okay? Mitch, can you pass the ball? Okay. Post players, it's really good to try and have your balance coming together on a little ball. Okay, so you can try and have, obviously, the size of your hands makes a difference. Okay, but when you have the ball like this, on your outside shoulder, and someone comes to punch, or comes to double team. It's very important to be able to throw a solid pass fake. And I want you to think about your arms are like a spring or a slinky. What happens when you stretch it out? Yeah, when you let it go, it snaps back, right? So if you're caught the ball in the post, and I'm playing with the double team, and you throw a pass fake, right, I might stop. Okay, so it's very important. Same as if I throw the ball into you, and I'm cutting. You might throw that pass fake, it's got to come and snap straight back. So your thumbs are in the middle of the ball, and it's on your outside shoulder, and your chin is on your inside shoulder. Right, just snap it, and then you come back. Let's rewind back to the start. Let's get three of those each. Let's go. Good. Make sure it snaps back good, wide stance. Middle ground, green spacing. We've got to make sure our chin is on our inside shoulder so we can see across the floor. Good, back to the start. Now, we talked about the post being a great place to pass from. Okay, in our offense and a lot of offenses, the post feeder will become a cutter. Okay, so if I'm playing with the here, he's done his work early, he's ducked in. Alright, as I cut, he's got to be able to turn and pivot to see me, depending on where he is on the floor. So at the moment he's block or below. If I'm cutting through the elbow, we want him to reverse pivot. Right. Open up, yeah, good. So he can see me, and then he has all this space to play. Okay? If he's above the block. Right, if I cut this way, we still want him to reverse pivot the same way. So, same way. So he might go ahead and go in the theater, and he looks at this pass over the top. Then there's a chance for him to still go to work. Okay? So what we're going to do now, we're going to throw the ball out. Come to our jump stop. I want you to check your position. I want you to check your feet. I want you to check the ball on your outside shoulder. The chin on the inside shoulder. We want you to try to run the last way. And then we want you to reverse it. And do that. We want you to shoot the ball. Okay, so we use that term here. Like swinging an axe, the ball goes in. shoulder, hip, shoulder. Then I want you to forward pivot and then you go. Okay, to look. Good, and forward pivot. Right, let's go back again. Couple more. Good, last one. Stay low. Good, okay, back to the start. So if I'm playing post on Cal, just roll it out here. Right, if Cal reverse pivots and doesn't put chop the ball, I'm digging it out of his hand straight away, or I might be swiping it again. So this has to be aggressive, 
as he does it, and once the cut is gone, his eyes have to go straight to the rim. Okay, just depending on how I play him, he might have a rip baseline. If I get nice and close, he might rip baseline. If I'm sagging off like this, he might shoot. Okay, so every time you pivot, wood shot, your eyes go up to the rim. So if we're doing it in reverse, so you guys can see, wood shot, pivot, eyes straight up to the rim. Okay, so let's get that in. Just go two times each. Hit it, eyes rim, good, 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 good. One more time. Now, if you want to face up, that is all very much the same playing one-on-one -on -one for the perimeter. Okay, so we're not going to spend much time on that. What we're going to work on is going back to having our back to the basket. That doesn't sound very good. We're going to go back to our back to the basket. We have to work on that one. Right, and we want to work on our hook shot. There's some sayings that I want us to come, come out of this with. First one is ball in the air, feet in the air. Second one is low and slow. Okay? You don't see a lot of post players playing really upright, they're low and they're slow. I think with today's game there's a bit of a change. And last time I went to the COE they had a great saying. You're either low and slow or you're vicious. You're either low and slow or you're vicious. Now vicious to me means I'm a leap up and just go straight away. There is however no way to play in the middle. Can't be sort of like kind of going hard, kind of not. You're low and slow, or you're vicious. So once Cal and Luke have faced up to the basket, we then want to hit it again, and now you're going to play one on one. Okay, we want to make sure that the ball stays on the outside of their body. So if Cal's here, remember if I'm playing here, so if he brings it over here, I have a chance to hit it. We want him to keep it on his outside shoulder, and he's just going to take two steps in the middle, and then another one. Shots, you're going to face the sideline, you're going to do the same thing, there's no room. Okay, back to the start. So you still got your pivots and your pass fakes. Go. Good. Two steps, jump stop. One, two, jump. Good, back to the start. So remember, low and slow, so two big steps. One, two, okay, go. When we're playing in defense and we're sliding, we don't want to bring our feet together because we become narrow and skinny. It's the same as when we're playing post. So take that with one, two, jump. Okay, I don't stand up in between, I stay low the whole time. Here we go, a couple more. Better. Good. Right, that's the start. So we're going to let them shoot now. Now when they shoot a hook shot, here's what I want you to think about. We want the ball to go up past your temple. Okay, so we want the ball to go up past your temple in your hook shot. We want your off hand to come off the ball as the ball goes past your temple, and that becomes your protection hand. You're not allowed to push it out, however, if you are allowed to finish like this for a hook shot. Okay, remember we talked about our cylinder. You're allowed to stay in your cylinder, particularly for smaller players. This is a good way to get out and finish like this. Okay. What we will see is a lot of younger players turning to face the rim and try and shoot a push shot. If you're playing against a good post player, they're going to smack it back into your face. Okay, so you're going to go low, slow, jump, hit. Okay, take a look. Good, go again. Now I want you to roll the ball out, we'll give it a 
start to play again. Right, so you're just going to play defense on him, we're not going to give you any rules. Okay, we're not going to give you any rules other than you, can, you have to reverse the pivot, you might score straight away, if not, you go to that piece. Okay, so you go, play D loop, slide, ice cream. First pivot, what do you need to do? Yeah, wood chop, then what do your eyes need to do? Look at the rim. Okay, here we go one more time. Not too bad, so make some start. So we have a child move that Cal is going to the middle every time, right? So now Luke's starting to overplay him, and as you as you will see, this is the next thing on our session to play in, which is the drop step. Okay? Listen to most good post players. They'll say you only need one really, really good go-to move and then one counter. Okay, particularly the fact that we don't really throw the that much. Anymore. Okay, so your counter is exactly the same. Okay, then we want you to drop okay, step and use the What's the basket? Your chin on your inside shoulder, eyes up early. You're going to step off this foot and your protection hand's going to go up again. You're going to finish out like that. So let's just go with zero first. Here we go. Good, Cal. Good, good. So still jump stop. Next hand up. Alright, one more time. Here we go. Get a bit of speed forward. Now lower the slide. Good. Pretty good. Luke, we'll play deep. Cal, you play however you want. Swap it after this one. Luke, you play dope. Here we go. Now I'm going to drew you in a line here, all facing this way. One, two, three. Okay, 
As you open the other back, we've done this before, you've got a ball, mark your short face this way. You are our defender, so you will be our drops defender. Once Jared says go, the drill starts. So your first job is to take one step towards an nail turn and play defense. Logan, your job is to see which way Jared goes. Okay, so if he goes this way, you're going to go the other way. So now we're separating and it's pick and roll, and we're playing against the one player. Okay, so you have to play inside the elbows, and it's either a pocket pass or a long pass. You have to play off two feet for a pin.
Okay, one more time. Here we go. Ready? 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 Ready?
more questions for Joe. <laughs> yep. Um, we're going to let the players go before we do all this. Thing. I think if you've got something that you think is pretty obvious, yell it out because others will be thinking similar. Yep. Yes, I'm not sure if you can do the whole project. It's not a basketball. Yeah. What was the 